had dropped four in a row. Lakers had won four in a row coming in. First quarter. Off the Lakers' miss, Pelicans out and running. This will be fun. Look at Williamson coming up the wing. Josh Hart throwing it up. Williamson throwing it down. He had 11 points and seven rebounds in the first half. Williamson later in the quarter. Pelicans up by nine. They really established themselves early in this game. Brandon Ingram says, hey, man, remember me? And then later, Ingram can't get that one to go. Stays with it. 17 points in the first half. He shot eight of nine from the floor. Pelicans up eight. They led by as many as 15 in the first half. But then LeBron James distributing. Montrez Harrell, the recipient there. James, six assists in the first half. Took just three shots. Let the game come to him. Playing that point guard, point forward position, whatever you want to call it. Anthony Davis got the mid-range game working. And then bodying up on Williamson. Davis, 15 points in the first half. Lakers down one at the half. Third quarter. Pelicans are down two. Williamson. A man his size, able to double clutch, stay in the air, and, and dunk that. Unbelievable, his athleticism. Finished with 21 points and 12 rebounds. Did I mention athleticism? LeBron James still doing it at 36. Able to get up and throw it down. And then... James sizing up the defense, sees the lane, and gets there. Lakers up 10 after three. Fourth quarter, Pelicans got it back down to four, but Lakers weren't having it. James to Harrell for the dunk, and then James to Kuzma for three. 11 assists for LeBron James in this game. Five minutes to play, Lakers up 17 and running away with it. James out there by himself on the perimeter. 21 points on just 11 shots as the Lakers run away with it, 112 to 95. They're 11 and three. Does it help though uh, to have, you know, not to have to play over 30 because you're up by 20? Is that stuff that you can sort of build up and save for later in the season or is it irrelevant? No, man, I'm, I'm 36 years old, 18 years in the league. There ain't no save for something for later on in the season. Uh, you know, my body is ready to play whatever I need to play throughout the course of the game. Um, I go um, hard while I'm out there and then uh, I start my treatment after the game, so. Uh, I wish I could bank time. You know, I wish uh, I wish I was Justin Timberlake um, in that movie where I could bank some time, but uh, I cannot do that at this point. Just still learning, like with uh, execution and learning that if a player is going to a certain spot, uh, we all still got to figure out like what to do and like spacing. Sometimes somebody's driving and we have three people cutting and nobody to kick it out to. And it's small things like that that we just got to fix. LeBron James and Zion Williamson each led their teams with exactly 21 points on Friday, which brings their combined total to three meetings to 180 points. Only three pairs of number one picks have scored more over their first three meetings in the common draft era, which dates back to 1966. As promised, Paul Pierce is in the house. Good to see you again, my man. Good to see you. How you doing? Good, good. All right, so the Lakers down 15, and then... They just went to another gear, ran away with it. How'd they do it? Well, when you have a top-notch defense and you have LeBron in the locker room yeah. at halftime, you're like, guys, we got to take it to another level. I've been on teams once we won a championship. There was no lead we felt like we couldn't come back from. And being that the Lakers are the champs, they're like, look, it's time to turn it up. We took a half off, let, let them get their confidence. But look, we got another gear. We're the champs. And they just pressed the button. That's what we used to call it. Let's press the button, guys. Let's show them what we're really about because to go from down 15 to up 20 points, yeah. <laughs> the Lakers know what they're doing. Uh, Frank Vogel said early in the season, and, and the players said that they were going to have to kind of work this early in the season. No, no real training camp, no, no real offseason. Uh, they were right back on the court mm -hmm. after the championship run, and they had a lot of new pieces. But now it seems like it, it's all working together. How'd they put it together? Well, the guys are buying in. The new guy, Schroeder. Uh, you know, Morris is back, a veteran who was there last year, Montrez, Harrell. These guys, they want to win a championship. Those right. guys are hungry, and they're keeping the energy up when they go into their video meetings, when they have, you know, breakfast at the hotel. Those guys are hungry, and it's keeping this team's energy up. So there's not going to be – I don't expect – any Laker hangover because now LeBron's minutes are down. AD's minutes are down. They got this added depth to where they could kind of cruise through the season but still win a lot of games and turn it up once the playoffs come. Yeah, James averaging about 32 minutes uh, per night, which is which is low for him. Yes. Uh, and the Lakers now with five in a row. All right, we're going to talk Mavs Bucks in just a minute. First, Neil with the highlights. 
Bartender. How about an old Milwaukee? Bucks and Giannis Antetokounmpo hosting Dallas and Luka Doncic. There's your stars. Here comes your highlight. First quarter, Dallas down seven. Doncic splitting two defenders. Boy, he's so good. Nice move right there. Splits him with the hesitation. Milwaukee was up seven after one. Let's go to the second quarter. Antetokounmpo. <laughs> Face full of, of Opa for Willie Cauley Stein. Bucks up 10 there. Then Doncic to Wes Awandu. In the corner, three. Doncic had 10.7 assists in the first half. Antetokounmpo had 16 in the first half. Milwaukee up seven at the break. Skip the third quarter, go to the fourth quarter. We got four minutes left to Now, entering the final minute of play, Doncic one of six from three, under 30 seconds to play. Mavs down two. Trey Burke shoots the three. Cauley Stein, offensive rebound. He finds Porzingis. After Burke, Burks to Porzingis. Notice Doncic did not touch the ball. And afterwards said, hey, what about that timeout? Had the timeout, did not use it. Rick Carlisle says, hey, we'll handle that internally. You can see Doncic frustrated. Okay, we got under two seconds. One of the Lopez brothers at the free throw line. That's Brooke. Misses. Doncic. Off the board, no good. Antetokounmpo, 31. Doncic, 28 and 13. The Bucks, 112-109. You no, know, we'll show him bodies. Uh, he wasn't able to get the easily uh, to step back that he loves to do. Uh, we just made him pass the ball. It's hard. You got to be like like him for 48 minutes. Uh, but I think Drew, uh, everybody behind Drew, did a great job. You know, switching. And when he was going downhill, we we were right there. We played bad. Uh, I'm gonna say that. I think we played bad. Uh, uh, it wasn't our great, our good game. But you know, we hang up there. Uh, you know, we had a chance to go up uh, in that situation. Uh, so I think we did some good things, even on a bad night. Great player, great sweatshirt. Uh, entering Friday's game, the Bucs had outscored opponents by over 11 points per game and had played just one clutch time game. Their three-point win over the Mavs is their first clutch time win of the season, becoming the last team in the league to win a game in clutch time this season. Clutch time is their new word. All right, so they get the clutch time win. It's a close game, Paul. Mm -hmm. And Giannis Antetokounmpo is one for ten from the free throw line. How much of a concern is that for you? Well, that has to be a huge concern. And this was the concern last year about the Bucks and why people didn't pick them to go to the finals or win it last year. Because down the stretch, you have to wonder, could Giannis make free throws? Could he be that guy? And you see this year, this is their first clutch time win. And thanks... And thanks to their defense down the stretch on Luka Doncic and then Middleton coming up with some big threes. That was the biggest question. Who's going to be the closer for Milwaukee? Middleton showed that tonight. But we all know that the ball is going to be in their best player's hands. And can he deliver? And if you can't make free throws and you can't knock down shots, open shots or three-pointers, that's going to be a big concern come playoff time for your best player. There he is working it out, 72% for his career, but his numbers have been dropping at the free throw line over the last five years. He's still an MVP type player, though. Luka Doncic picked uh, by, by a lot of critics uh, as, uh, I should say, uh, NBA analysts as the MVP front runner this season. You still going with that? Well, he's well on his way, as you see the numbers tonight. Close to average in a triple-double. If he can get a few more wins toward the end of the year to where you got the Dallas Mavericks sitting in the top four position, then yes, because the numbers are going to be there for him. But to the victor goes the spoils. And we all know if you don't win a lot of games and you won't get that MVP trophy, it may end up in the hands of LeBron with the Lakers being in first place. Yep. But we'll see. Doncic uh, does a lot of things and does a lot of things well. Absolutely. He's fun to watch, man. I enjoy watching him every night. It's good to see Porzingis back also. He should be the, give them a big lift. Good to see you, too. It's the truth and nothing but the truth. There's a restaurant next door to our studio here called Shaquille's or, or Shaquille's, as my wife put it. She's not a huge sports fan. Uh, Shaq's beloved by Laker Nation. Rings do that, so the restaurant a block from where the Lakers play makes sense. Now, James Harden opening a restaurant in Houston. That's a tougher one to swallow. The steakhouse is named 13, Harden's number with the Rockets. Except now he's wearing 13 for the Nets. 13, the Chop House, is scheduled to open this month. It's getting reviews already, and one comment reads, doesn't quite have that championship taste. Will 13 deliver? 
after the bubble, uh, after that loss, just wanted to reevaluate my career and and uh, the team and, and the direction that the organization was going. And, you know, as time went on and free agency and things like that started to go on, it was like, well, I felt like we didn't have a chance, you know. And so I think at the point in my career, it's not about money. It's not about anything else but having a chance of reaching the ultimate goal is, you know, is to winning uh, at the highest level. From your postgame comments after the Lakers lost to what your teammates were saying about you as far as being disrespectful, it got pretty ugly at the end of your tenure in Houston. Is there any part of you that regrets the way that it ended? I wasn't disrespectful to anyone. Um, those guys had just got there, Houston. Um, I've been there for a very long time. I've been through all the ups and downs um, you know, with that organization. And I wasn't disrespectful towards anyone. You know, I just made a comment, um, you know, so there was, there was some things you know, I felt like out of my character, um, but the ultimate goal was to get somewhere, um, you know, where I can compete. And here I am in Brooklyn, you know, I have nothing but love and respect for that organization, uh, that city um, and everything that has they've done for me and my family. And um, it's not a guarantee that me coming to Brooklyn is, you know, guaranteeing a title. But I think for me, giving myself a chance is very, very important. And I mean, you just look at this entire roster and it's built um, for any style of, of basketball you want. Um, and then the coaching staff who, you know, knows the game of basketball at a high level, you just add that all together. And it's like, uh, that's, a, that's a legit chance right there. It was a no brainer for me. All right, so, so after all, we couldn't let Paul go <laughs> without, without talking about this. Okay, so now you got James Harden, Added to a team with Kyrie Irving, we think, and and Kevin Durant, all ball dominant players. Yeah, let's talk about on the court first. How's this going to work? Well, it's going to have to be some type of sacrifice. Who's going to be able to not have the ball in their hands when they're used to having it in their hands most of the time? And if these players are true to themselves and they say to each other, "We want to win a championship," then. You're going to have to take the sacrifice, which means we're not going to see all these isolation plays that we're used to seeing from James Harden in Houston. We're not going to see Kyrie dribble the ball 24 seconds until he can get a shot. This is Durant's team, and everything okay. has to go through Durant. And if they can understand that, this team has a great chance. But listen, who doesn't want this trio on the court? Because you need, they have all the ingredients. And one of the main ingredients to win a championship is you have to have a top five player. If you look at the look at it every year. Yeah. And they have two of them. Okay. So you say it, it's Durant's team. Okay. That's this is Durant's team. On the floor. Okay. The floor. So now we get to the locker room. And these mm -hmm. are some complex personalities yeah. that we have here. All three of them. How does that work? Well, you, you said Steve Nash think, has, has the toughest I job think, in North American I pro think sports. Steve Nash has the toughest coaching job in sports because not only does he have to probably redesign his offense, he has to manage egos. He has to make sure everybody's happy. And now the pressure's on. Yeah. It's championship or bust in, the, in, in, in Brooklyn. And it's his first year. Hey, as a coach. it's his first year. And so that's why I feel like he has the toughest job because you've got a guy with no coaching experience, coaching two of the top five players in the league. Kyrie is arguably top 10. And so there's a lot of pressure there in Brooklyn to win a championship. If you had to guess right now, I put you on the spot. How far do they go? I believe this team can get to the finals. Uh, uh, there's no excuse. You got Durant. Wherever Durant goes, you have finals. You have finals on your.